Hey YouTube, this is Gracie and welcome back to Disney Bounding Cards and more. On this channel, I usually show how to make a Disney Bounding greeting card, but today we're going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to show you how to make this Jurassic Park and Land Before Time inspired thank you card. Now last year, my brother and his wife got me a ticket to Universal Studios Hollywood and we finally were able to use that ticket during the holidays for the New Year's actually. Um, my mom and I went to Universal Studios and we got to ride the Jurassic Park ride. And so we just really, really wanted to make a thank you card and send it to my brother and his wife to just say, you know, thank you so much for allowing us to go and have a really nice time together. So uh, the park itself was awesome. It was the very first time that my mom and I had ever gone to Universal Studios. And let me tell you, I have to admit, all of the employees there were a ton nicer than the Disney employees. And it's hard for me to admit that because I'm such a big Disney fanatic fan, but it's true. They were really, really nice. They were super helpful and just very, very courteous. So I would definitely recommend going there. We went um, around the new year, so it was really busy. And of course you had to wait a really long time to go on the rides. So we actually didn't get to ride too many of them, but we did ride the Jurassic Park ride twice. So that's why we decided to do, or I decided, I don't know why, who's this other person? I don't know. That's why I decided to show you guys how I created this card for them. Now there's a little bit of a backstory behind the two characters here. Um, this one in particular reminded me of Littlefoot for, from Land Before Time, and then this one kind of reminded me of Sarah. Uh, from Land Before Time, and it just so happens that my sister-in-law, her name is Sarah, so it kind of works out great. So let me go ahead and show you the products that I used for this stamp, uh, for this stamp, for this card. I used the Stamps of Life, and this is the, what is this called? More Dinos 2 stamp collection, and obviously I used the two dinosaurs, and then the sentiment here, a note from a thank you saurus, from the thank you saurus, rather. And then on the uh, leaves here, I use different die cuts. I use the pine bows from, let's see, what is this company made in the USA? That's great, awesome. Um, and then, oh, here we go. This is from Memory Box. I don't know where the actual brand on this is, but anyway. Then I also used the Lawn Fawn. Uh, this is the Pretty Poppies, and I just used the leaf die cuts here. And I did that in all different kinds of greens. So you'll see I did some like neon greens, some like forest greens, and some just like regular green. Then lastly, I used Spellbinders Nestabilities Classic Ovals for this center oval die cut piece. Um, on the back side, I did my typical G stamp. And I did that with Stampin' Up! Um, ink pad and Old Olive. And then I used this pen, um, I think it's just called Le Pen, and I used, uh, let's see, there is no actual number on it, but it's kind of like a sea green kind of color. It, it looks more like a normal green on the camera, but it's a little bit more of like a dusty green. Anyway, so this is a peekaboo card, so it opens up and you can see in from the inside of the card um, all the way out, so you can see your hand going through there. There you go. And then this piece of cardstock is actually just a kind of like silvery um, splatter kind of print. And I just got that from my ginormous stash of cardstock in my craft room. And then I used Copic pens, and I'll be leaving all of the names of the Copic pens in the description box down below so you can see exactly how I achieved um, all of these very specific colors to color in Littlefoot and Sarah. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I did this card. I started off with my typical five and a half by four inch card, and I did a brown card instead of a typical white. And then I cut down my first piece of cardstock, which was the uh, speckled green. It's kind of like a forest green. And I cut that down to the exact same size as the card. So that's five and a half by four inches. The next thing I did was I took my card and my cardstock together, layered them how I wanted them to go, and then I took my die cut from the Spellbinders Nestabilities in the ovals, and I used the large die cut, and I just placed that slightly towards the top of the card, 
um, so that way you'd have more room on the bottom here to place your two characters. And then I just ran that through the die cut machine. And it was quite easy. And these are the two pieces that pop out. So you'll take that out of the center and you'll get your card part and your uh, card stock piece. And you'll just kind of toss that aside and use that for another day. The next thing to do is to move your card aside, flip your card stock over, and now you're going to place all of your different leaves. Now I kind of did a bit of a framework on it, so I used like the larger leaves on the sides and then just the filler, all the smaller ones and the odd um, you know, numbered colors um, on the inside. So what we're gonna do is just place the leaves however you'd like. And also keep in mind that you want it to like pop off the, the rest of the card. So you can kind of tuck some of the leaves behind or technically in front. And make sure to just frame it really well. Just make it look however you want. And then I'm literally just going to do like little bits here and there. And don't worry about the placement on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and cut that off in the end. And now we're just going to place Actually, let's space these out a little bit more because I don't have too many pieces. I wanted to keep it simple and not have too much greenery going on to overpower the card. So that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing for this card. I'm gonna keep it really, really simple. And now I'm gonna take my, just my simple tape roller and you can definitely do a different way. You can glue these down um, or use any other product, but I felt like this one this way was a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and especially for camera, a lot faster. So we'll go ahead and just put our pieces of tape on there, making sure to not get into the actual oval area or towards the bottom really. And just pushing hard. And now we're gonna cut off the excess, uh, excess uh, little pieces. Just go ahead and flip that over and then just cut along the cardstock itself. And that's pretty much it. Nice and simple. So there's your little greenery there. And now uh, we're going to actually glue that to the card. So that's where it's important uh, to line up the card correctly. So one of my many tips that I've had over this long process of doing these videos is that I highly recommend using liquid glue when you're going to glue something down that you need to be in a precise spot. So I use my uh, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue and I just use little strands of it if I can because you don't want it to pucker too much. So just do it around the whole picture frame and then around the whole card. Just like that, nice and simple, not too much glue. Actually, let's go ahead and put some on this bottom corner there. Missed a good chunk of that. And now you could also pop dot this layer um, if you wanted to, I just, thought it looked nice and like modern, I guess you can say, um, just by gluing it down. So we're gonna make sure that you line it up with the circle or oval rather. And not, uh, you know, don't worry too much about the sides showing on the card, because uh, you can always cut that off if you have too much excess. Uh, but since we used the liquid glue, we were able to kind of move that around and it didn't stay put as soon as you placed it down. So that is definitely glued down. If you really were, you know, super, 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 uh, you know, worried about it, you could definitely cut that little piece off here, but I'm not too worried about that. The next thing to do is color in your uh, little stamps here of Sarah and Littlefoot. This, at least that's what I'm gonna call them. And then we're just gonna simply glue those down as well. Now make sure that when you are gluing your characters down, you wanna make sure that you're gonna glue where there's no overlapping and that way you're not gluing um, inside your card either. So I kind of placed that already for my first card so I kinda of have an idea of where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna allow the character to come off the side of the card just so that way you can see more of the inside as well. Now if you're not too keen on that, you can always put the characters on the inside of the card and that's totally fine too. It'd be really cute for them to kind of you know, poke out from behind. Actually, it'd be really adorable. Um, so it's up to you, however you wanna do that. So we're just gonna glue these down right in the center there. And then she's just gonna kinda come off the side of the page. And there you have it. So thankfully, because I did use the Copic pens, they're, uh, they blend really well. 
So I've used several different colors, especially for Littlefoot, um, and they just kind of blended and um, got as close as I could to the character's colors. Now I stamped this sentiment on the inside with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink, um, if you're curious about that. And that is pretty much it. It is a very nice and simple, but hopefully adorable card. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Definitely hit that subscribe button for more cards headed your way. And maybe even a few DIYs in the future. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.